So in this video, I'm going to address a topic that is sometimes overlooked in most calculus courses, and it is the topic of partial integration. So partial integration, as you may imagine, is the opposite, it's the inverse operation of partial differentiation. So in this case, if we differentiate the function f of x and y with respect to x, we will treat y as a constant. But what happens if we want to integrate some function of several variables with respect to a single constant? Because remember, this has to be the opposite of that, essentially. So what if we have something like this? Let's say we, um, we want to integrate this function with respect to x. So this is what we call the partial integration of the function. Then we would expect to get an order of function of x and y, but we will treat y as a constant, because obviously if we treat y as a constant here, then we need to treat it y as a constant here, because the only variable we're integrating with respect to is x. So what do you think the constant should be, the constant of integration of this indefinite integral or antiderivative? Well, if y is treated as a constant, then that means that our constant term here should actually be a function of y alone. And the reason for that is that if we differentiate this whole expression with respect to x, then this would go back to this expression, but this would go to zero. Because this function does not contain any terms of x, so if we differentiate it with respect to x like that, then this just is treated as a constant and it becomes zero. So this is what the whole concept of partial integration is behind. We're going to get a function that is a function of the variables we're treating as a constant during this integration. Similar, if I had something like this, let's say we had a function of three variables. And let's say we want to integrate with respect to z instead. So what do you think we're going to get? Well, we're going to get another function of all those three variables plus a function of the variables that were not integrated with respect to, or the function of the variables that were treated as constants, in this case x and y. So our constant of integration is now a function of x and y. And the same process can be expanded to, to a whole of other, a lot of other cases. So we can have a multi dimensional function, we have a, an n-dimensional function, and then obviously we'll get a function that is n minus 1 dimensions, because it has um, n minus 1 variables involved. So we can have uh, grab the same function again with respect to y, and then we would get something like this. Now this would be, s it would be different from this obviously, so we would have to get uh, plus now another function, let's call it g2, of the function, the variables that we treated as constants, in this case x and z. And that's basically what we will get from that. So this is what the process of partial integration works. And how do we find those constants, obviously? Because it's quite important if there are functions of variables that are part of this. Well, the only way to do that is if we have conditions that allow us to integrate with respect to all three variables at once, and then cancel out terms or find terms by performing the right substitutions. And this is something that we will cover in more detail in future videos when we actually talk about potential functions and about finding um, um, the, a gra the gradient of a scalar function that is equal to a vector field and all that. So this is something we will touch upon in the future. But for now, let's do a, a few examples so that you can get a, a little intuition into how this process works. And this is something that we will be using in the next video as well when we get started on double integrals as well. So let's say you have the following function x squared y plus sine y. And let's say you want to integrate this with respect to x. So what you would do is you would treat x, you would treat y as a constant and integrate x, so that would be x cubed over 3 times y plus x times sine y, because remember y is 3 as a constant, so we treat any function of y as a constant plus a constant, but now the constant has to be a function of y, so we call that gy as a general term. So that's going to be the integral of this. Now let's have another example. Let's have the following e to the x squared plus y squared plus uh, let's have x squared over y minus 3xy. And let's integrate this with respect to y. And here I'm just going to put this little thing here. So let's put a y there so we can perform the integration. So obviously, what, what are we going to get here? This is going to be, well, with respect to y, we're just going to have 
what? We have this expression, so I'm just going to scroll down here a little bit. So we have this expression, y e to the power of x squared plus y squared. Now let's call another variable u. Let's say it is equal to x squared plus y squared. And now let's say that the partial of u with respect to y is going to be equal to 2y, like that. And then basically what we have here is we, ha we can actually make this a 2y by putting a 1 over 2 in, on the front. So that basically cancels out to 1. So the ha we have this expression. So now we can write 1 over 2 e to the power of u, uh, partial of u. And then this is going to be what? This is going to be 1 over 2 e to the power of x squared plus y squared plus some function of x because remember we just integrate with respect to y so it's some function of x let's call it uh, g of x and do we actually get back to this function when we differentiate this with respect to y well let's have a look if we, if we differentiate this with respect to y we get a 2y here so that 2y that 2 cancels out with a 2 so we get y and then this becomes 0 so we have this function again so that's the, the first term in that particular uh, integral and then for the other two, it's going to be a little bit simpler. So we're going to have 1 over 2 e to the power of x squared plus y squared. Then for this one, we have y to the power of minus 1. So that's going to be minus x squared y squared. And then finally, we're going to have minus 3 over 2 x y squared plus the function of x gx. So that's going to be our final answer for that problem and hopefully this has given you an idea of what partial integration is and how it works now just as a, as a little side note I should point out that it is actually not quite common it is actually not that common to use this kind of notation for when we're performing integrals because remember that when we have multiple integrals we're actually going to perform integrals more than once so sometimes we just use the same differential elements as before so we may have something like this so, so really this is not a very conventional notation for a partial integral but in general we want to um, is, uh, integrate with respect to one of the variables only and then we treat the other ones as constants and hopefully this will serve you as a good introduction to what multiple integrals are going to be like and in the next video we're going to get introduced to double integrals